For my final critical analysis, I decided to focus on stereotypes of women in advertising. I often see women trying to transform their natural beauty into the latest makeup trends, which is okay until companies and advertisers start to make them believe that this is how they should look rather than how they should want to look. In the ads, sexy seems to be the theme that Revlon was going for, with intentions of making women believe that in order to be sexy, this is how they should look with the help of their project products. Among the four photos, there was only one where the woman looked to be genuinely happy. That was the lady from the 1940s ad, and that was because she looked to have had a genuine smile on her face rather than just trying to look sexy. She gave the impression that she felt good rather than just looked good. Starting with the 1960s ad and moving all the way up to the 2000s, the stereotypical way that a woman should look has completely changed the way that advertising picks and chooses what will and won't make people want to buy their products. By taking already thin and beautiful women and photoshopping them to become even skinnier and more flawless than they already are, has given both women and men an unrealistic idea of how women in their body should look. Today, I often read articles about how celebrities are both upset and disturbed by the photoshopped images of them appearing in magazines and all over the media. We as women should feel proud and confident in our bodies, because no matter how much someone tries to make you believe you should look, everybody and every body is different. If someone doesn't like the way that your body is built, that's not your problem, and it's not something that you should feel ashamed of. Using an ad to make women believe that simply purchasing a product will make them more beautiful is one of the easiest ways to bring in a profit, especially when so many people are trying to attain perfection. But what they don't advertise is that perfection is only two-dimensional. Alongside the pictures are empty promises the product will bring. For instance, in the 1980s ad, the most unforgettable women in the world wear Revlon. That's a bit of a tongue twister. First of all, I would like to see this statistics on that because I highly doubt it's actually true. But second, why would someone want to be remembered simply because of their choice of nail polish? <clears throat> That's one of the things that advertisers like to do. Take the insecurities of women, for example, meeting a cute guy at the bar and worrying he won't remember you the next day, and making them believe that their prove product provides a solution. Well, if my nails aren't cherries in the snow red, he obviously isn't going to remember my name. Honey, that's not how it works. Now let's look at the ad from the 2000s. Every woman has a story. It's not how you tell it, it's how you live it. My personal take from this message is that in order for my life to be well lived, I have to be adventurous. Sure, that's one way to look at it. People's ideas of living their lives to the fullest can range all over the place. But to then make me believe that wearing a certain brand of lipstick is going to make me live my life more audaciously and therefore could be considered more beautiful, you have to be kidding me. By making proclamations like that, not only are you hurting fe the female group as a whole, you are limiting them to what they themselves believe they are capable of. The last little bit that I want to talk about is the idea that women have to wear makeup and look a certain way for men. And maybe this is my feminist side showing through, but it seems to me that from the start up to today, women and men are under the impression that we wear makeup and look a certain way to impress the male beings. And that is simply not true. In the 1940s ad specifically, it almost caused me pain to look at and read its comments. Just because it was directed towards looking a certain way that would best complement and please the man in your life. No! Wearing makeup and looking sexy is not something that we as women should do for men. It is something that we do for ourselves. We deserve to feel sexy. We deserve to feel confident and happy. We don't owe it to the men in our lives. And if they enjoy it and appreciate our efforts, great. But at the same time, we should never feel that we have to look a certain way just to please them. This is something that I think media and advertisement has been doing a horrible job of emphasizing. It's something that has affected women for many years and is still affecting them and our youth. Today, every woman has something that makes them beautiful, and beauty is more than skin deep. We can't allow advertisements to make us think any different. I don't know about others, but for me personally, not 
a single one of these ads made me feel inclined to buy the product, whether they were in my era or not. I am someone who feels that the purpose of makeup is to enhance one's natural beauty, and that might be shown through my simple routine of mascara and mascara alone, but when reading through the ads, not once did I feel that whatever product was being promoted was going to help me feel more beautiful, not only through the way that I looked, but the way that I felt. Something that I see happening today with certain companies, Dove for example, is that they're advertising with real women, not models, and focusing on making women feel that they are beautiful behind all the layers of makeup and with all the curves. This is something that I wish more companies would start to look at and move forward with, because by doing so, we are creating a better society and allowing everyone to feel beautiful in their own skin. Thank you.